my TNA Hard Justice 2008 pay-per-view review. The opening matchup was for the X Division title between Consequences Creed versus Petey Williams. And this was actually an exciting opener, a lot of good back and forth action. These two worked very good with each other. I wasn't expecting this. I wasn't expecting it to be that good of a match. Um, definitely far exceeded what I was expecting. Not that much of a fan of Consequences Creed, and still even after this match, not that much of a fan of him. PD went out here, made it at least a good overall match. The only thing that anyone would probably have a problem with this match is um, that at the end of this match, Sheik Abdul, a.k.a. Davari, comes out here, hits Consequences Creed with a chair, and that ends up PD Williams, him rolling into PD Williams, and PD Williams hitting the Canadian is shorter and about a three um, star match. And um, earlier in the match, um, Creed did hit uh, the Creed ET and um, definitely looked like that could have possibly been the end. Only got a two count. But like I said, a good overall opener and very enjoyable match to open up the pay per view. Then the next ma match was the six woman um, tag match for the uh, knockouts divisions with um, Taylor Wilde, Gail Kim, and ODB. Versus the beautiful people in Amazing Con. And um, this was a match that should have just been on Impact. Wasn't pay-per-view worthy. Wasn't pay-per-view quality. Um, this match, uh, I would think, you know, with all these people in it, even though I'm not a fan of them, Taylor Wilde is pretty much the only one in this match I'm not a fan of and uh, don't think is a good performer at all. Pretty much everyone else is at least good to good overall in the ring. And this match should have been a whole lot better than what it was. I would have much preferred, like I said in my predictions video, to have a knockout title match, you know, a one-on-one -on -one match or a three-way. Um, they definitely need to get this title off of Taylor Wilde. Just like always in her matches, this match ends with a fucking roll-up. Um, and they need to do something, um, have her build up uh, more maneuvers, actually have her use a finishing maneuver to win matches instead of just a roll-up. Um, out of nowhere, they need to do something a little better. And this was a disappointing knockouts match, and it's kind of been the way the knockouts division on pay per view has been the last couple months. The matches haven't been up to par where they once were. Um, I'd give this match about one and three fourth stars. Then the next match up was for the TNA World Tag Team Titles with LAX versus Beer Money Incorporated, Robert Roode and James Storm. And um, this match was a whole lot better than their Victory Road match. Still, you know, just a good overall tag match. Um, I, I definitely enjoyed it a whole lot more than their match before. Uh, during this match, Robert Roode was generating a lot of great hill heat from the crowd. Um, the crowd was really into this match. Um, definitely behind LAX in here. Um, hopefully TNA doesn't do the one thing in this match that looks like possibly could be happening in the future. They teased a little LAX uh, breakup in this match with um, Homicide and Hernandez shoving each other, but that was only you know a very quick portion of the match. Um, the spot of this match was Hernandez picking Homicide up with a border toss, throwing him to the floor onto James Storm and Robert Roode. The end of this match comes when Homicide's in the ring, James Storm gets a beer bottle, um, throw, hits um, Homicide in the eyes with it, and that's the end of the match. So the new TNA World Tag Team Champions are... Beer Money Incorporated of Robert Rudin, James Storm, and a surprisingly very good match, I would say, two and three-fourth star match. Then the next matchup was the worst match of the night, was Sanjay Dutt versus Jay Lethal in the Black Tie, Brew, and Chain match. And this was, just like everyone probably thought it would be, a really terrible, terrible match. And... You know, the one thing I do give them, what you'll see with my rating of this match when I get to that, is um, they actually, at least a little portions of this match, tried to make it at least watchable, tried better, um, tried to do at least some wrestling maneuvers in here, but still the gimmick of this match, which was the gimmick where they either had a pin or submit each other, I think, and then, or you could either win by taking the wrestler's clothes off. And I don't know why that had to even be in here. Um, that just doesn't fit well, and don't know what you want to think of Russo and Mantel for having that gimmick in this match. Um, but this match wasn't enjoyable at all. You know, these two guys are very great athletes, and it's sad to not see them in a good match. If this was just a regular chain match. Um, this could have probably been a very good chain match. Um, but the you know them wearing suits and stuff and really uh, st held this match down. Um, James, uh, not James Storm, Jay Lethal 
uh, picks up the victory after hitting a lethal combination and the um, elbow from the top rope onto uh, Sanjay Dutt. So obviously this feud has to continue because I can't see it ending just with this, and especially earlier in the match they had um, SoCal Val was out there, Sanjay, Sanjay Dutt was getting hanged over the ropes by the chain from Jay Lethal, San, uh, SoCal Val tried to stop him from doing that, um, he wouldn't stop it, so she just ran to the back, and that was the last time you saw her in this match, so obviously they're going to probably continue something, with hopefully they'll have some either good gimmick match next month, or just have a good wrestling match between these two, um, but with, you know, basically the story behind it, it would have to be somewhat of a brawl or something, but hopefully they'll do a whole lot better next month with these two um, in about a one and a half star match at best. Like I said, they at least tried to go out there and have a good match with the terrible gimmick that was behind it. Then the next matchup was Team 3D versus Christian Cage and Rhino in the New Jersey Street Fight. And the one thing about this street fight was this street fight didn't seem like it was worthy for pay-per-view. Just like some of these matches didn't feel like they were worthy for pay-per-view. If this was put on Impact and was an Impact main event, it would have worked out great and worked out well. And the one thing I had a problem with this match a lot with was when they were in the crowd, you know, TNA's terrible camera staff that they have really were missing a lot of action and weren't get, really getting a lot of the action when they were fighting in the crowd. You were missing a lot of stuff. Christian, uh, I think, did a dive to the floor, but the camera didn't pick it up from, you know, even the first angle, and they didn't replay it, so they must not got the angle of it done well. It's just, you know, a typical street fight, nothing, you know, terrible, but nothing really great between these two teams. The end of the match comes when they have a ladder pl uh, placed in the ring. Christian Cage goes to the top, does a splash to Bubba, Bubba uh, gets up, sells it, that his ribs are hurting after the frog splash. Then Rhino gores him through a table, and that's the end of the street fight. Christian Cage and Rhino pick up the victory in, you know, a two-and-a-half star, possibly two- and three-four star match. You know, it could have been a whole lot better than what it was and didn't feel like it should have been on pay-per-view. Um, felt it should have been an impact main event, uh, not a pay-per-view match. Then the next matchup was AJ Styles versus Kurt Angle in the last main standing match, and this is easily match of the night. Just a lot of incredible stuff between these two. Started off with Kurt Angle playing a little mind games, trying to go to AJ Styles to go after him real quick. Then they um, had Kurt Angle dominate for a little bit, then a lot of good back and forth action with um, both of them having about the same amount of offense for a little bit. Then they fought outside the ring, fought up to the stage, suplex onto the stage from AJ Styles to Kurt Angle. Um, then AJ Styles gets thrown off the stage with a suplex from Kurt Angle. Then Kurt Angle actually does a flip dive onto AJ Styles from the stage to the floor, something you don't see from him that often. Then they get back into the ring. You see a lot of good mat wrestling. Um, then they basically, you know, both of them try to get their finishing maneuvers in to get the 10 count. Um, AJ Styles uh, hits the Styles Clash. Um, Kurt Angle hits the... Uh, the Olympic Slam about two times. Then the end of this match was the sickest part, part of this match, and a lot, uh, uh, very good ending of this match. Calculated very well. Both of them were on the um, top rope. AJ Styles hits Kurt Angle with probably one of the sickest top rope DDTs I've ever seen. Kurt Angle sold it very well, and then AJ Styles picks up the victory, so he wins the last man standing match. About a four and one fourth star match. Just like I said, match of the night. A lot of incredible stuff. Then after this match, you saw um, AJ Styles come back into the ring as the EMTs are trying to help Kurt Angle. Um, AJ Styles drops Kurt Angle down with a frame bust to the head. Um, then after this, you see the lights go out. Um, AJ's on the ramp. And then you see Sting up here drop AJ Styles with the death drop. So it doesn't really make any sense Sting getting involved here and not getting involved in the main event. Then up, up next was the main event. And the Six Sides of Steel's weapons match for the TNA World Heavyweight title with Booker T versus Samoa Joe. And this was just a very generic match. Nothing really special. Not that much to really talk about in this match. They did involve the weapons in this match a little bit. Not to love all I thought they would. They actually used the cage pretty well, which is one thing that doesn't get used in every cage match as good as I think they should. They involved that pretty decent in this match. But 
just a match that didn't feel like it should have been a pay-per-view main event, just like the New Jersey Street Fight and some other matches on this pay-per-view. Felt like a match that should have been placed on Impact and not a pay-per-view. Then this match comes when the lights go out. You see Samoa Joe uh, have a guitar in his hand. When the lights come back on, he hits Booker T, pens Booker T. So Samoa Joe's still the TNA World Heavyweight Champion. So obviously this is teasing a TNA return of Jeff Jarrett, probably with a feud between him and Booker T, which I'm not really looking forward to. But glad Samoa Joe's still heavyweight champion. Hopefully they'll run with this at least till Bound for Glory, where I'm hoping TNA does the smart thing and has AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe for the TNA world title. Main event, I would give two and three four stars. Overall, I would give this pay-per-view about a 6.75. The last main standing match really helped this pay-per-view out, and the opening X Division title match was very good, and pretty much everything else was at least solid, and you know, the only thing really terrible, really terrible on this pay-per-view was probably you know, the Jay Lethal and Sanjay Dutt match.